Next is the endocrine system and let's begin with thyroid synthesis. Here is our hypothalamus with anterior and posterior pituitary. Here is our mammillary body. And you remember our famous paraventricular nucleus which was synthesizing one hormone that was important for breast. That is oxytocin. It also releases one hormone called thyroid releasing hormone which stimulates the cells of anterior pituitary to release thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone works on the follicular cells of the thyroid. I have enlarged one follicular cell of the thyroid. Here is one follicular cell and it does two functions. One is increase in protein synthesis and increase in release of T3 and T4. Let's start with them. First step is iodide trapping. Here is one iron trapper. It traps the iodide into the follicular cell. Now where is the source of iodide? It's from the diet. Now once the iodide is inside the follicular cell, it is taken up inside and it is converted into iodine. Iodide is converted into iodine. The step is called oxidation and it is mediated by thyroid peroxidase. Right? Since the protein synthesis is also increased, it, the cells will start making a new protein that is new thyroglobulin. And this thyroglobulin protein has tyrosine residues in it, right? This thyroglobulin is also taken up inside. Okay, so the next step is organification. What's organification? It's attaching iodine to the tyrosine residues of thyroglobulin. If one iodine is attached, it is if the uh, compound form is called monoiodotyrosine. If it two iodine are attached it forms diiodotyrosine right one iodine to one tyrosine monoiodotyrosine two iodine to two tyrosine diiodotyrosine here is the organification step this is also mediated by thyroid peroxidase next step is coupling that is combination of mono and di will form t3 combination of two diiodotyrosine will form t4 this step is also mediated by thyroid peroxidase. So thyroid peroxidase does three function. Right. Now the chunks of colloid are taken up by the follicular cells and this vesicle will contain T3 and T4 and they are released in the blood. Yes. Now once T4 and T3 are in the blood, T3 is the active form but T4 cannot directly act in the cell. So we need to convert T4 into T3 in order to bring our action, right? So here is the structure of T4. We have iodine at four places, 3 dash, 5 dash, 3 and 5. Now the D1 type of mono D iodinase, right, can remove iodine from 5 dash position and from 5 position as well. If it removes iodine from 5 dash position, right, here is no iodine, the compound form is called T3 and it's active and can act in the cell. Now if it removes iodine from 5 position, it forms a compound what is called as reverse T3 which is inactive and cannot act in the cell. So D1 monodiiodinase can remove iodine from both the rings. If it is D2 monoiodinase, it can only remove iodine from one ring and it can only form the active form of the thyroid hormone that is T3. So D2 can only form T3. If it is D3 monoiodinase, it could remove iodine from the 5 position only. That means it can convert T4 into reverse T3 only. Right? So in short, D1 monoiodinase can form T3 and reverse T3. D2 monoiodinase can remove iodine from the 5 dash position only. That means it can form only the active form of the thyroid hormone. D3 is the uh, main, hormone, uh, main enzyme to inactivate the thyroid hormone that is T4. Now if you are asked to choose which one is the main hormone to convert T4 into T3, go for D1. So this one is the first question, which is the main hormone? D1 thyroid diiodinase. The metabolic rate is least affected by, look, 
TSH stimulates, uh, I mean the TRH stimulates TSH and that will increase the release of T4. But thyroid binding globulin does not affect the metabolic rate. Hypothyroidism is a condition where overall metabolism of the body is decreased. Therefore, the liver also decreases the receptor for LDL. So if the receptor of, of, for the LDL are also decreased, there will be more amount of LDL in the circulation itself, right? And this will increase the cholesterol level too, right? So the correct answer is A. Which of the following is not essential for biosynthesis of thyroid hormone unit, iodine, thyroglobulin and increased protein synthesis? You don't need ferritin. Low CSF protein may be seen in all except Look, I said hypothyroidism is a condition where basal metabolic rate is very down and protein catabolism is also going down. So protein will increase in the CSF in hypothyroidism. What is pseudo tumor cerebri? It is idiopathic intracranial hypertension. That means the intracranial pressure is increased without any tumor in the central nervous system.